maybe you've been a senior director or a director for a while, but haven't progressed past that, you might still generally like the company and there really isn't an incentive to leave. So you're pretty comfortable, but you are still not fulfilled. Maybe you aren't being challenged. You still know that you want to achieve something when you're ready. And that's the key word when you're ready. The organization hasn't promoted you yet, so you must not be ready, right? Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do, because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. One of my favorite things is to get direct messages on LinkedIn from female executives. They reach out to me directly, maybe on a not so great day after back-to-back meetings or being triple booked after a day ruled by things not moving the needle. And they think, what are we even accomplishing here? I don't feel like I'm making an impact. They reach out to connect because they want a safe space to figure out what's next for their career. Because right now in their role, they know it doesn't feel right. Something is misaligned. They know it in their gut and they've made a pivotal decision. And that's why this is one of my favorite things because these leaders are ready to be intentional and strategic in their career. That feeling might sound similar to you. You might be watching others get promoted seeing other people ascend to positions that are well beyond their skill set and you feel frustrated and maybe not valued i want to tell you that you can step into larger higher paying roles while having boundaries you never even thought were possible how would it feel to walk into your work week knowing that you have a list of challenging things ahead of you that you have more control over your day you know you might be shocked how calm and centered and focused that you feel The opportunities are coming your way and there's no part of you that's hesitating to consider them. I want you to get more strategic in your career, to figure out that next step, to land that promotion that you want, to feel like you are in charge of your week, to set the standard for how you work and how you show up. I know that you're ready. You're ready now. Join me and other high achieving women in the six month group coaching cohort. Apply now at thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. That's thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. Learn more and apply today for the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about some data that I've been collecting from leaders over the past several months. Earlier this year, we did a career transition series on the podcast. Those episodes are episodes 96 through 99. We started that series out with an episode called, Should I Stay or Should I Go?, where we launched a quiz that you can take that is available to take um, on our website. That's thecatchgroup.com, and it is on the banner at the top if you haven't taken that yet. And that really gives you insight into, should I stay or should I go? And when we talk about that, it's do you want to stay in your current role or do you, or should you leave? Um, The second episode of that series was episode 97, Evaluating Career Opportunities with Your Values First, where we dug into different materials and ways to think about how you evaluate what's most important to you and how you can do that in your job search. In episode 98, we talked about in terms of transitioning, the different things that you need to think about. So that one's called, what are you leaving behind? And I walked through an exercise 
where I teach you how to evaluate what you learned from your past role and what you need to keep with you, but also what you need to metaphorically or maybe even physically leave behind as you transition to your next role. And then in episode 99, we talked about how to get the support you need in career transition. So the career series started with that launch of that new quiz called, should I stay or should I go? And I built that quiz to help you answer that question. And when I launched the quiz, I had a few hypotheses of how the results would show up, but let me give you a little bit of background on the quiz and the categories first. So let's recap the the categories. The first one is you are misaligned. So maybe something isn't quite right in your role, but you can't put your finger on it. So something is misaligned with the culture or the role or your skills or something. The second category is you are headed for burnout. So this is the overwork, the overwhelm, the need to build boundaries before you burn out. The third category was you are already ready. Kind of this idea that you don't realize it yet, but you are ready now. And all you really need is that confidence boost to get your next role. The fourth one is you are ready for a change. Like, you know, you know, you are ready, but for some reason you just haven't pulled the trigger yet. And then the last one, the last category is you should stay and grow. So since the launch of the quiz in late February, early March of 2023 and today, so since then, and the numbers today, over 10,000 leaders have taken the quiz. 10,000 leaders. I know that is a lot. It still kind of blows my mind when I think about it. And as I talk about the data today, I think there's just, there's many caveats as I interpret it. Remember, I have my PhD in applied psychology and I've been trained in research methods, data analysis, how to run research and experiments. My master's um, is in experimental psychology. So I will be the first one to tell you that this collection of data is more like a survey. It's not super scientific. It wasn't rigorous data collection. And really it was a tool to help people think about and get unstuck in understanding what they might need to do to take action. So leaders opted into this survey, most likely after seeing a social media caption or a post that they resonated with. So leaders that are even taking this survey or quiz will be skewed just because they may have lower levels of employee engagement if they're opting into a quiz clearly labeled, should I stay or should I go? But even with that, I will tell you that I did write this quiz myself. I included questions that are linked to factors that do correlate with higher employee satisfaction and engagement. I wrote the quiz knowing that I wanted to differentiate the behaviors or feelings to give you a quiz answer that is linked to an outcome that you can then take action on. You know, I did lots of due diligence on these, these quizzes and on the responses. And, you know, after taking the quiz, leaders can opt into an action plan that has curated podcast episodes and reflection questions customized to their quiz results. So even though this is not a scientifically rigorous, you know, from a research methods perspective, it was very thoughtful on how it was built based on research and knowledge from my 20 year career. And as an organizational psychologist working and leading in corporate settings. So let's dive in on some of the the insights that I have found from the, should I stay or should I go quiz? So people most likely found out about it primarily from listening to the podcast or through my social media on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Since the quiz launched, over 13,000 leaders have viewed it. Of those, over 12,000 have started it. And of those that have started it, we have an 83% conversion rate. That means that over 80% of people that started the quiz completed it. And as of this podcast recording, that is a little over 10,000 people. That is a really high response rate, first and foremost. I know that from survey research. Um, That's a huge response rate. Um, So we're really excited about that. 
but it means that the topic resonated with, with people. And so based on that, I can tell you a little bit about the people that take the quiz. The quiz in, is in English only. So that's primarily where the leaders are from that have taken it. English speaking parts of the world. So US, Canada, the UK and Australia are the primary regions. So of all of the people that have taken the, the quiz, about 15 to 20% of the people downloaded the quiz to take action. So some people may have just been interested in a fun quiz to validate their feelings about work, but a portion of those are really eager to get their hands on an action plan and to take that next step and take that next action for career growth. So I mentioned before I had some hypotheses before I launched the quiz. My hypothesis was that the highest, you know, highest category, I guess, would be leaders in burnout or heading toward it. And I thought that that would be by a pretty big percentage. Then the next category I thought was probably feelings of misalignment, but I thought that the gap between those two categories would be pretty big. And then I thought the rest would be a pretty small percentages. So a small percentage of people that thought that they were already ready, but didn't really know it yet. Like they needed that confidence followed by a, a small percentage of people that had made the decision, but just hadn't done anything yet. And then the last category I thought would be a very small percentage of, of getting stay or, and grow because you're probably least likely to even take a quiz titled, should I stay or should I go if you are happy in your role? Right? So I will tell you some of my predictions were right and some of them were not. <laughs> so the highest category was actually feeling misaligned. So your job looks good on paper, but something just kind of isn't sitting right with you right now. So then, then the next category that was the highest was heading to burnout. So I did get kind of the top two right in my prediction, but in the wrong order. But many, many leaders are headed towards burnout. The lowest category was indeed stay and grow, but the last was a surprise and not in the order, but by the percentages. So those that reached are ready now and those who have made the decision, but haven't left their roles yet combined, those categories were higher than I thought together. Those two made up of th over 30% of the results. So that's over 3000 people of quiz takers that have already made the decision to leave their companies or who are ready for their next move, but lack the confidence. It's a lot of people that surprised me a bit. And so I thought that, you know, I thought that this would be less for some reason, but then, you know, I thought about it a bit more. And I remembered a conversation that I had with a fellow coach colleague of mine a few months back. So we are both coaches, but we serve different audience, but both run programs that help women leaders advance their careers. And we do check-ins every few months together. And in one of our check-ins, we talked about how we had leaders that were interested in advancing their careers and talking to us, but they had not yet applied for our programs. Like they had interests, but they weren't sure if they were ready for our programs. Like they were having imposter syndrome over even applying to a leadership program. So even in that capacity, they didn't think that they were ready yet. And this was, we thought my fellow coach friend and I, we were like, wow, this is so ironic that this is happening, not even at the job level, but at the, the development level. Like I remember one email exchange I had with one participant at the time that wasn't sure about her readiness for my, you belong in the C-suite group coaching program. She said that she felt like she needed assistance, that she was not getting the support that she needed from her manager and in her role, but she wasn't sure if she was ready enough to join the program. But in a moment of courage, she submitted her application and in an email to me, she mentioned that she put her resume in the freaking box and submitted her application. And I love seeing that language in our email exchange. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the story, I opened up my book values first with a story from early in my career when I didn't feel qualified to apply for a job. Like many women, I reviewed a job description and didn't meet 100% of the criteria of that job. So I didn't apply. 
But when given another chance in person at a job fair, I grounded myself in my values of development and remembered that in fact, I love learning and then I can figure most things out. So I put my resume in the box and then ran away as fast as I could. So I couldn't undo my decision, but basically I submitted my application. Right. And so this leader had quoted my story and mentioned that she had submitted her application and put her resume in the box. She did the thing that she was scared to do. And I realized that in that discussion with my coach colleague, that we were witnessing that women just weren't feeling this way when just submitting their resumes for jobs, but also for other opportunities for growth and development. And so they don't feel they're ready enough to even apply to development opportunities. So today I'm going to dive deeper in this idea of you are already ready. So in the quiz, this is how I describe this idea of you are already ready. So you are already ready, but you don't believe it yet. This feels like Maybe you've been with the same company for a while or in the same role for a while. Things aren't bad per se, but they aren't as amazing as it used to be either. Maybe you've been in your role or a level for a while. It feels really safe to stay. You still get new opportunities in your role, but you feel stuck at a certain level. For instance, maybe you've been a senior director or a director for a while, but haven't progressed past that. You might still generally like the company and there really isn't an incentive to leave. So you're pretty comfortable, but you are still not fulfilled. Maybe you aren't being challenged. You still know that you want to achieve something when you're ready. And that's the key word when you're ready. The organization hasn't promoted you yet. So you must not be ready, right? And the spoiler is this. You are already ready. You are. You may not believe it yet but your work isn't being recognized for promotion for whatever reason. You are already ready for bigger things. This looks like imposter syndrome. It looks like being passed over for promotion. It looks like being recognized with consistently great performance, but not enough to get to that next level, right? So I'm here to tell you, you are already ready. You've been ready. You are ready to apply to a bigger role. You are ready to keep growing. You belong in a bigger role. You belong in a space to develop and continue to grow. You are ready for that next thing. Even if you don't yet believe it yourself, I am here to tell you, you are already ready. So what could that look like? It may mean that you are ready for a new role within your existing company. It could be a new role in a different department. It could also mean replying to one of those direct messages on LinkedIn when a recruiter reaches out to you. It could mean looking at bigger roles instead of settling. Even if you've recently been laid off or don't have a role right now, it means not settling. It could mean submitting your resume to bigger roles at smaller companies. It could mean challenging yourself to get out of your comfort zone of the industry that you're currently in and apply to roles in other industries that you're passionate about. It could mean not waiting for your company anymore when they've promised that promotion. That was months and months ago, and nothing has happened yet. It could mean not waiting for your manager to develop you and putting your development in your own hands, like getting your coach or joining a development program. It could mean deciding that you are ready for your next role, but knowing that it's not at the company that you're already in right now and having the peace of mind of knowing that's okay, that you'll find something somewhere else that meets your goals. What I know is that even when you make the decision to leave, that some leaders are stuck in a holding pattern. How do I know that? Because the other 30% of the, that group I mentioned, the data in my quiz, tell me that, that people are ready for a change, but they haven't done anything about it yet. So they are ready for a change and are still in that role. They're stuck there, whether that's imposter syndrome whether that's lack of accountability, waiting for their bonuses to pay out, I will tell you, there is always something that is going to hold you there. They know that in the long term, that that is not the role for them, that in the long term, that company isn't right for them. They may feel disengaged. They may feel like they're not giving their all, but they're still a high achiever, right? They may care less than they used to, and they know that that's not like them. 
So why haven't they left yet? Lots of reasons. They may need a next role before they leave. They may have an outdated resume and they don't know where to start. Maybe they don't feel like they are up to networking yet. They may be waiting for for lots of different things to finish a project. They don't want to leave their team. You love your team. You don't want to leave your direct reports. I could go on and on. There's always something that's going to keep you there. So whether you are ready or if you've already made the decision right now, you're in a position that feels uncomfortable. And I want you to reach your career goals. But more importantly, I want you to live a life aligned to your values. And your job can be a big part of that. I want you to be at a company that aligns with your values. I want you to set the pace for your week and feel challenged, but accomplished and not overwhelmed with work. And I know that you can get to that. You may need accountability to get there. You may need community to get there. You may just need an outside perspective. I'm inviting you to join us in our next group coaching cohort of the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. I know it's called You Belong in the C-Suite. And before you even talk yourself out of it, let me tell you about the types of leaders who've loved this program. They are leaders who have career aspirations for more. Maybe that's eventually C-Suite roles. Maybe it's not, but they know that they want more than they have now. Maybe they are trying to get a promotion or they've just landed a big promotion and now they want to feel more confident in their role. Maybe they're misaligned and they don't know how to find alignment and they need career clarity. Maybe they need more confidence before they apply to those roles and they don't know where to start. There are usually women in the director level and above, but I will tell you that not all job titles are the same at companies. Some smaller companies don't have director titles. So sometimes they are senior managers. They lead small teams to large teams. Some strive to get to the VP level. Some are still trying to figure out their director level at bigger companies. They are usually women in their mid careers with aspirations for more. And if that describes you, then you should apply. You should put your resume in the freaking box. That's the metaphor. There's actually zero requirement for you to submit your resume as part of the application process. The application process takes about 10 minutes. I ask you things about what you want to get out of the program, things like career clarity, a space to hold yourself accountable in your career transition, maybe a way for you to build your confidence. I ask you about what you can give to the program. So what are your strengths that you can bring to the group? What specific experiences do you bring that will help others learn? I ask you about your level of commitment and availability, those types of things. So if you've ever thought about it, now is the time to apply to the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. You don't already have to be in the C-Suite, so please do not discount yourself. The You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program is a six-month experience. I build out cohorts that are really small on purpose. The sweet spot for cohorts is four to six women in a cohort. That way you get a group experience. You get to know the other women in it and you get to learn from them, but you also get individualized attention as well. This is a space where you will need to show up. You need to attend and do the work. We also meet you where you are too, though. Each month we focus on a different module, but you have a customized plan that you work on at the beginning. We also start out group coaching with a one-on-one with me so that we can get you kicked off in the right way with a customized plan for your development. Then we meet monthly for group coaching sessions. And then we also meet a few times in the month to build community, to get informal coaching along the way. So in that six month time span, I've seen leaders get promotions, get raises, negotiate for more in terms of their bonuses. But most importantly, I've seen them gain confidence, build boundaries and prioritize themselves and their development. So ask yourself this, where do you want to be in the next six months? In six months, do you want to have more confidence? Do you want to get rid of some of those limiting beliefs? Do you want to get more career clarity? Do you want to land a new role? Do you want to transition to a new role with the boundaries that you've always wanted? Go to the catchgroup.com slash group coaching to apply now. The six months will go by no matter what. So if you are thinking about it, I would tell you this, you are already ready. 
I'll say it one more time. You are ready now. Put your resume in the freaking box and do the thing that you want to do. Remember, your leadership belongs here. You belong in the C-suite. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. Editing and support for the podcast is done by S&E Podcast Management. To get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values, go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care.